today on Personal Injury Court. I leaned against this faulty railing here, and next thing, I am falling 10 feet. I just asked her to come out and take some video footage of the property. She decides to be a circus act. We don't know, actually, if she'll have use of her left hand. You're asking this court to award you $1.6 million. This court calls to the stand a true social media superstar, Zoe. Hello, friend. <laughs> My sister would kill me if I didn't say that. I'm like the Hulk. You don't want to see me mad. Judge Gino Brogdon spent 10 years on the bench ruling on cases worth billions of dollars. Now he presides over some of the largest claims in TV history. This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Becklin versus Roberts. Ms. Becklin, it's my understanding that you are suing on behalf of your daughter for injuries that she received when she was at the defendant's ranch. Yeah. You're asking this court to award you $60,000 for your daughter's past medical expenses, $40,000 for your daughter's future medical expenses, $1.5 million for pain and suffering for a total award of $1.6 million. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Roberts, you believe if Ms. Becklin had stayed where she was supposed to, she never would have been hurt, so her injuries are her fault, true? Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. What took you all to Mr. Roberts' ranch? Um, Paul has always been a very creative child, and as a teenager, she got into the social media craze, like all teenagers do and she found she had a really knack for the videos. She started something called Packing with a Purpose, which is packing for any occasion without overpacking. Well, this took off, and she started her own social media channel, and right now she has over 90,000 viewers, which is it's huge. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So yeah. We're, very, we're very proud of her. Yeah. Now, my sister watches these packing videos. I'm not sure why she's so obsessed with them. How, how did you get into it, young lady? Um, well, my amazing mother taught me. Um, I used to not be the cleanest person. Um, and then she decided to start teaching me the right way to pack, the right way to clean. And I thought, you know what, this is a great thing for me to teach other people my age. So you built this huge following doing these videos? Yes. People watch you pack. Yes. <laughs> uh, now it. I've got something to talk to my sister about. <laughs> Mr. Roberts, tell me about your ranch. I've always had just a love for nature. My great-great-grandfather inherited a bunch of land and decided he wanted to pass that along from generation to generation. Well, when it was my turn, around 20, I ended up uh, taking some of the land and developing a ranch. This and is beautiful. It is. It's a beautiful you. place. It, it's just magical. How did you end up at the ranch, and how did your daughter get injured? Well... Mr. Roberts contacted us and he said he wanted to start an initiative to get kids and tweens and teenagers off their phones and back to the land. Well, good idea. You know, Paul and I thought so too. Um, so we agreed to go out to his ranch and he toured us around and kept reiterating the views that he wanted her to capture um, so that he could get some of her followers to come out to the ranch. Mr. Roberts, you wanted to kind of tap into her celebrity and let it help you out and help out your ranch, right? Well, I most definitely wanted to promote the ranch. I gave them a tour. I um, showed them the different cabins and the different suites that we had. I also mentioned that a couple of the locations were under construction, but very light construction. He never told us some of the rooms were being renovated. So, Ms. Becklin, how did you get hurt? Actually, could I show you, if that's okay, uh, yes, on the monitor? Well, why don't you cross on over, but take your time. I don't want yeah. you to hurt yourself. Okay. <sighs> so this was the cabin that we were staying at. Okay. We were staying down here. All right. And while my mother was unpacking, I decided to walk up here to the second floor. It was a beautiful room, and I went outside to this patio here, and I had found the spot for the video. However, I could not get the angle right. I could not fit myself in this video with my backpack, with everything that I needed, and to get the views for him. 
So I turned around and I leaned against this faulty railing here. And next thing I know, I am falling 10 feet. And I wake up and I am in immense pain. There is blood everywhere. So you hit those rocks. I did. Your Honor, she couldn't move. She could not move. I, I thought she was paralyzed. I didn't know what to have. I happen. thought I was going to die. Well, there's no more frightening event no. for a parent no, there's than not. to have your child be injured badly. Oh, and so. the blood was everywhere. And I just, I didn't, I didn't want to touch her. She couldn't move. She was crying, and she was just like. Yeah, I know it's a bad situation. <sighs> I, Mr. Roberts, uh, what happened? I showed them to their room. And I, I told her that she can start filming whenever she felt comfortable. Okay. I went down the hill to tend to some business, and it was about an hour later I received a call from her mother stating that there was an accident. Uh, she told me to call 911, which I did immediately, and rushed up the hill to find her laying on the ground, bleeding and crying, saying that she couldn't move. Did you know that she had gone up to this room? I did not. I told them you're free to go wherever you want within this 480 anywhere, acres. Anywhere. 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 I expected her to go out and explore like kids should. You thought she was going to go outside. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Coming up. He wanted me to get the amazing views of his property, and I did. He, I he, think she just decided no. to go upstairs no. because it was easy oh, instead no. of exploring. Oh my God. So, Are you so me? let me get this straight. You are crazy. Talk to me. Talk to me. It's gonna be order in this courtroom. This court calls to the stand a true social media superstar, Zoe. Hey, friend. Hello, friend. <laughs> My sister would kill me if I didn't say that because she loves your video. I leaned against this faulty railing here and next thing, I am falling 10 feet. I expected her to go out and explore like kids should. You thought she was gonna go outside. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I he, think she just decided no. to go upstairs no. because it was easy. Oh, instead no. of exploring. Oh my God. So, are you so me? let me get this you straight. Are crazy. Talk to me. Talk to me. There's gonna be Sorry. order in this courtroom. <laughs> Y'all not talking to each other today. Mr. Roberts, you expected that she would go outside and take pictures. Absolutely. I never told her what? to go up to that suite. He should have told me to go outside, but he told me I could go anywhere. He wanted me to get the amazing views of his property, and I did. You know, so looking at this rail, I I'm trying to figure out what, what did you do to it? Did you sit on it or stand on I it or not. something? No. I leaned against it. I simply leaned against it. That is all I did. It was rotten. I mean, it had so you fall. lean your back against it. Yes. You're trying to take a picture. Yep. It gives way, and you fall down on yes, those yes. rocks. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You could have been killed. Yeah, I could yeah. have. That's Thank the whole God. point. Thank I mean, God, I had my backpack. I'll show you. Can we get it for you, hon? Go ahead. This, this was the backpack. As you can see, and it broke my fall. So it wow. had soft it's stuff ripped. in it. It's disgusting. Without it's that safe. backpack, yeah. you would have broken have your back. Yeah. I could have died. Yeah. Yes. Ms. Becklin, you are asking this court to award you $60,000 for your daughter's past medical expenses and $40,000 for the future medical expenses. Yes. How are you paying those bills? Fortunately, um, our church is, is helping us some. They've put together a fund and, and they're trying to help us, but... We, it's been hard. We, you it's know, there hard. are months we don't know if we're going to be able to make our mortgage. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Becklin, just... I see you've got both hands wrapped up. You've got terrible facial injuries. Yes. Uh, what's what's been the worst of all of your injuries? The worst has probably been my ankle. It has Ooh. been so hard not being able to get around and move the way I need to. I cannot film. Who's gonna wanna watch someone on social media who has scars all over their face? This could have ruined my career. Well, I do want you to know, young lady, that scars heal and that you're gonna be fine regardless of this case. So keep, keep your hope up and keep your focus. I was also looking at your medical records. You've had surgery on both your wrists and actually yes. have hardware, yes. screws yes. and plates in your wrists. Yes. We don't know, actually, if she'll have use of her left hand. Next.
She was doing too much. She decides to be a circus act and gets up on the balcony. You need amazing views to get people attracted to what you're posting. This court calls to the stand a true social media superstar, Zoe. I would have stayed on the ground. I'm not, I'm not climbing on mm -hmm. the stuff. had found the spot for the video. So I turned around and I leaned against this faulty railing here. And next thing, I am falling 10 feet. Mr. Roberts, you see this is a big deal for this young lady and frankly for this family. Absolutely, Your Honor. I feel bad. I honestly feel bad. But at the same time, I don't see how this is my responsibility. She was doing too much. Are you Tell me about I that. I just asked her to come out and take some video footage of the property, but instead she decides to be a circus act and gets up on the balconies. It, Nobody asked her to go So is there. it a circus act to lean circus on your fall. banisters? I was I mean, trying, if that's the case, most yeah. of your guests are in the circus, right? So I was getting... She really did not have to lean over a balcony. I it's was just not necessary. The views that he had asked me for. When it comes to social media, you need mm. amazing views to get people attracted to what you're posting, to get people to go to these places. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get a great view so more people would visit my page, so more people would visit his place. Of course, I wanted some good footage. But she was doing too much. Too much? She was doing the job you hired oh, her to do. Oh, come on. I, I hired her to come talk out. Talk to me. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'm like the Hulk. You don't want to see me mad. <laughs> May I speak? Yes, ma'am. He should not have allowed us to go into rooms that were not safe. His yes. property should be up to code when he has guests. Yes. Well, I'll figure that out. Not been allowed. To better understand the importance of these views and social media, this court has consulted a true social media phenom. He's had over 100 million YouTube viewers, over 5 million Instagram followers, including a long list of huge celebrities. Wow. This court calls to the stand a true social media superstar, Zoe. Sheriff, would you get Zoe? Okay. Hey, friend. Hello, friend. <laughs> My sister would kill me if I didn't say that, because she loves your video. Well, tell her I said thank you so much. I will do that, and she will pass out. OK, I thought I was in trouble when I came up here with the bailiff. I was like, oh, my god, it's serious in here. <laughs> and, <you know? laughs> well, to someone who wants to become a social media superstar like you, mm -hmm. what's your advice to them as to how to do it? Well, all you need is a camera, and you need yourself, because um, it's so easy. Anybody can do it. Um, but it takes consistency. Like, you have to be consistent. You have to um, work hard, be, uh, I don't know, just be yourself. Well, Miss Becklin got a real following doing these packing videos. Uh, what do you say about those? Packing? I just pack my stuff. I don't, <laughs> I don't need somebody to tell me how to pack. But I mean, awesome you to pop. you. But <laughs> I want to take a look at this video and have you comment on it. <laughs> okay. Okay. She just rolls up everything. Save space. Uh, save your space, friend. Yeah. Right. I've never seen someone wrap up. Was that a napkin? She deodorant. The... Deodorant. Mm -hmm. I need my glasses. <laughs> 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 I fell off the building. No. Uh, <laughs> see, uh, okay. I, that's just a lot of stuff, friend. I gotta watch. learn how to say it that I way. You need to watch that video so I can pack me some more. <laughs> there you go. That's right. Because <laughs> I can put all that inside the book bag. <laughs> so. Ms. Beckland was hired to come out and get some views of the property. Mm -hmm. What would you have done if you had gotten that assignment? I would have got the views. I would have stayed on the ground. I'm not, I'm not like, climbing on mm -hmm. stuff. Well, she um, especially if it's rotten. I'm not climbing on stuff, but um, I would have got my, uh, my views and my camera shots. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. You are released. I'm good. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Add one thing that he brought up that was a good point. Yes, ma'am. Um, it looks like the banister had been painted recently, so I think he painted over a rotten banister. Oh. 
I agree. Yeah. Mr. Roberts, what kind of renovation work were you doing on the property? Very light renovations, um, mainly just tile and paint, nothing structural. <sighs> Uh, we were aware that some of the balconies, the wood on the balconies, needed to be replaced. And oh, four. Admitted it. But but not all of them were in not bad shape, right? Not all of them, sir. We just hadn't identified that balcony yet. Okay, <laughs> folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. The verdict is in. The evidence you've put up today is that. He called you to the property to mm -hmm. take advantage of your popularity on social media. What you did is go up to another room, you go out on the balcony, lean on the balcony, mm -hmm. yes. the balcony gives way and you fall to a real life change. Yes. Mr. Roberts, you're kind of baffled by this because you believe if she had stayed put and taken pictures outside, this never would have happened. against this faulty railing here. And next thing, I am falling 10 feet. I just asked her to come out and take some video footage of the property. She decides to be a circus act and gets up on the balconies. Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff has the burden of proof. That is, the scales of justice start off equally balanced. The plaintiff's burden is to tip those scales in the plaintiff's favor, however slightly. Here, your burden is to prove three things. You've got to prove Mr. Roberts was wrong, that his wrong caused your harm. Mm -hmm. The evidence you've put up today is that he called you to the property to mm -hmm. take advantage of your popularity on social media. Yes. You've got a lot of followers, and he wanted folks to see his ranch. Mm -hmm. You did that. You went to his ranch. Yes. He told you you could take pictures anywhere. What yeah. you did is go up to another room, you go out on the balcony, lean on the balcony, mm -hmm. hoping to get a good view. Yes. The balcony gives way and you fall to a real life change. Yes. Yeah. You believe he should pay for every bit of that. Yes. yes. Yeah. Mr. Roberts, you're kind of baffled by this because you believe if she had stayed put and taken pictures outside, this never would have happened. You believe her injuries are her own. She simply tried to do too much. Well, the legal principle that comes into clear focus is a landowner's responsibility to handle and address a hazard. Yes. If yes. you know or should know that a part of your property is dangerous, mm -hmm. you're supposed to take measures to protect your customers, your guests, from that danger. Here I find you have proven that Mr. Roberts knew of a danger of these mm -hmm. banisters being weak. He did not repair them, right. but that's not a problem. The problem is he did not protect you from going near the banister, yes. and thus yes. you stepped right into the trap, fell off the balcony, and mm -hmm. you were injured, and it's your fault. I find you've proven his wrong caused your harm. I'm going to award you $60,000 for your past medical expenses, $40,000 for your future medical expenses, and $1.5 million for your pain and suffering for a total award of $1.6 million. I find for the plaintiff and against the defendant, that's my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Roberts versus Clark. It's my understanding, Miss Roberts, that you are suing Miss Clark for injuries your daughter sustained in her laundromat. You are asking this court to award you $8,000 for past medical expenses for your daughter, $2,000 for future medical expenses, and $150,000 for emotional distress for a total of $160,000, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Clark, you own this laundromat? Yes, Your Honor. And your position here, based on what you filed with this court is, she should have watched her kids. This is her fault. Yes, Your Honor, it is. Thank you, ma'am. Now let's get into the legal sauce. Ms. Roberts, tell me how 
you got to be at this laundromat this day. Well, um, I'm a single mom. I live in this very small apartment. They don't have a laundromat. So that's why I come here. How I'm, many children do I, you have? I have two. These are your babies here? Yes. I should have had Tina girls. the one on the right side, and Rochelle's the, the one on the left side. We bake together. We sleep next to each other. We. I think the most together. fun I've ever had in my life is being a parent. So yes. I can I can I, definitely get I with you on it. that. I love it. I love it. They're my girls. They're my everything. I will do anything for them. So I why this so laundromat? Hard. Had you been there before? Yes, I always go there. We don't have a laundromat at our apartment, so okay. they came with me that Saturday morning. So, Miss Clark, how long have you had this laundromat? I'm a third generation owner. My grandfather started this business uh, over 60 years ago. Now, in mm -hmm. the laundromats that I've been in as a kid, uh -huh. they were packed on Saturdays. Yes. People waiting to use the machines. Is that how they yours has relatively. been? We stay relatively full on the weekends mostly, yes. So, Miss Roberts, tell me what happened on the day in question. Okay, so I was folding my laundry, my kids were coloring. And, uh, are they near you or are they somewhere else? Yes, they're like uh, like 15 feet away. Okay. So I was folding like my clothes. Yeah. I was folding my clothes and uh, they were coloring and all suddenly Gina gets up and she starts climbing into one of the washing machines. And it happened within five seconds. So when at the time I got up, my other daughter, she pushed the, the door and then it locks. I mean, with You must five have seconds. been frightened. I mean, it was horrible because it locked. Yes, ma'am. And I tried to pull it, and it locked completely. So the water started coming down. Was and your little girl looking at yes, you? Yes, she started crying, and my other daughter started crying. So I started I know this was bad. freaking out because well, I can imagine all she wanted was her mommy at that point. Yes. It's what are you doing at this point? You I'm pull trying to pull her. I'm trying to push buttons and nothing. I started screaming for help. Help, somebody help my baby because she's going to die. So she never came out, and I thought she was going to die because I saw her, the water going in over her head, and then it started rocking. And then... Now, Ms. Clark, you can see that this this had to be frightening for any parent, I, any mom. It would have been frightening for me, Your Honor. I'm a mother and a grandmother both. Now, were you there this day? Yes, I was. How did you office. know that something had gone wrong? When I heard a scream, and uh, I had seen the kids run around throughout, you know, and I was thinking to myself, why isn't she corralling these kids because they're running around? Everybody else's kids is having to... Yeah, but over you don't understand kids, over that my the, daughter... Over in the kids' area, killed. and she before died, I knew I it, before I knew it, like she said... It happened suddenly, but as she just told you, she saw it when it was taken. But I would imagine, yeah, though, I, I would imagine in any laundromat where moms come with their babies, moms and dads, that kids, three and four year olds, yes, they know that, nothing but energy, right? Yeah, but that's all the more reason why you should keep an eye on your kids. Now I'm you sure agree with that? Energy at you agree with that, don't you, Miss Roberts? In the home. And this happened within five seconds. Miss Roberts. You agree with that, though. You you should watch your babies, right? I I was watching my babies. I know you're wa I know you're washing clothes. I understand that. I certainly yes, but do. This happened within five seconds. By the time I got there, it was locked. So she once the door closed, you said water yes. was coming down. Water was coming down. Within two minutes, it started rocking, and I couldn't even pull it because it locked she, out. So she's in the yes. washing machine. This is happening, and then there's water coming down yes. on her head. So this is a nightmare. Screaming. It is a nightmare, Your Honor, horrible. but as it she was, just said, Your she Honor, she screaming. saw her baby climbing on the washing machine. She could have said something at that point. Your Honor, it is she not our so fault. Scared. We have a kid's area where we ask them and we make an announcement for you to keep an eye on your kids and please, if at all possible, make sure you so how, stay in that area. How far, how far is this kid's area? Tell me about this kid's area. You got a TV and toys, well, we that have, kind of stuff? We have, some t we have TV, we have the, the soda machines, we have different little toys, little building blocks and things, the chairs, the size for the kids. So is it fair to say that your laundromat is fit for moms and kids. Yes, it is. Uh, Working no, moms not. and kids. Yes, it is. No, it's not. This so, area so is so small. If you, if you see a picture of it, it's so small. Well, it's about 25 feet, 20 feet between the kids' area and the whole laundromat area. And, it is. and, and this is the kids' area? That's the kids' that, area. That doesn't look like it's uh, gonna have you a whole lot of kids there, right? The washing machine, it's about Well, you, feet. you could have a few, you could have... A if this is going to work the way you want it to work, Tell me how this happens. Do, do parents just put their kids over there and go well, back to washing well, clothes? They do. And, and leave their kids over here? And periodically they come and check on their children, but they can see them. As she said, she saw her child when she first started to climb on the wash machine and her other child was with her. At that point in time, knowing how rowdy her kids have been, I would have said even if I was folding clothes, I'd stop folding my clothes.
So, Miss Roberts, I see the pain on your face. Tell me what happened to your little girl. Was she hurt? Yes, she was. How hurt. was she hurt? Tell she me about hurt. her injuries. When she got locked in there, yes, ma'am. It's the water started filling. Yes, ma'am. And ma then when it started rocking, this other guy came and he helped me. He grabbed a fire extinguisher, and then he said, "I'm gonna have to break it." And did he break the the glass? Yes. And it got your baby out. Yes. I mean, thanks to him, not for her. Now I see because that she I, die. I see that your daughter had eight thousand dollars in past medical expenses. Tell me about those injuries. Well, her arm is broken. Okay. And she had bruises all around her shoulders because yes, of the rocking of the machine, and then she had a cut right over her eyes. Okay. And I also have some pictures. Just to show you. Sheriff Matt, if you retrieve those pictures, and thank you, ma'am, for providing those. Yes, Your Honor. So this is your little girl's arm here? Yes. And uh, this is her left arm? Yes, her left arm. Was she frightened about all these bandages and things on her? Yes, it's horrible. She was crying. She was so scared what happened. She won't even take a bath anymore. She won't even go to the swimming pool. Now, see this uh, this abrasion? Where is that it's on her right body? It's right over here on the right side. So she banged her shoulder up, yes, too? Yes, your owner. Okay. I see this uh, incision here. What? Where is that on her body? It's right over here. Okay, so she had a cut on the inside of her right arm, too? Yes. Okay. Now I see there's a, a cut by her eye. Is that how her eye looked? Yes. So she had to get stitches in that eye? She did. At three she years got, old? Yes. She got You, you can imagine, Miss Clark, this is a bad deal for this little girl, right? She hasn't been the same. Your Honor, I, I do agree that the child's injury is. You, re, you bad remember when your kids were little kids? Yes, of course I do, Your Honor. Yes, yes ma'am. Of course I do. But, I, but my, my thing is, Your Honor, that is not my fault how this child got injured. If her mother you know, had been, been more responsible as a parent to look at her, look out for her child, this wouldn't have happened. How come you didn't unplug it? The wash machines that we have are on a line. You can't unplug one. Okay, and how do you how... operate them? The people aren't well, plugging and unplugging They're operated them. by a corn slot, and I had a sign on the machine that says broken in English and in Spanish. Okay. okay. Now, how, how would a three-year-old yeah. be able to read that? It's not for the children to read. Okay. They have an area for them. When the parents see, if it was my child, and I saw that there was a faulty something or My first thing would be, and y'all stay away from that one. Miss Roberts described her little girl getting into this uh, washing machine, mm -hmm. and it starts rocking. Actually, you, you didn't have to put any money in it. That was the problem. You're supposed you to pay unaware. to wash, but it just washed on its own. So right. It wasn't working properly, and that's the reason why we had to get it repaired, because it was washing without any money. Now, Miss Roberts, washing. you can see that sign that was uh, on the front of this washing machine, right? Yes, Your Honor. Did you see it that day? I didn't see it that day. But okay. if I would have seen it, I mean, <laughs> I, I would have at least, like, I would have washed my clothes there if I could have used it without coins. You know what I'm saying? Miss, <laughs> now, let me circle this apparatus on the top. Yes, sir. Uh, tell me about this. Is that where they put the coins? Yes, sir, it is. Now, that was one of the things that was broken. That's the main culprit that was broken. I have a work order here, Your Honor, if you'd like to see it. Yes, ma'am. Sheriff Matt, if you'll retrieve that from Ms. Clark. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am, for providing this. Yes, sir. It says, repair commercial washer operates without taking coins. Exactly. And then you've got a diode replacement. Right. And then a coin slot replacement mechanism. Right. That's so, even, that's so that we can operate the machine. So even the coin... A uh, receptor was wrong, that's, or at least not working correct. properly. It wasn't working properly, and that's the reason why we had to get it repaired. Do you rent that, or do you own no, it we, like you do the washing machine? We own that and had to put it on top of there so that we could make it a commercial washer. So this washing machine and the corn receptor, they're kind of your babies. Yes, they are, sir. You own them? Yes, sir. Okay. And I did want to mention, Your Honor, we have never had anything like this happen in my line of men in all of the years that I've been there. My father or my grandfather, we've never had any incidents because we're very careful. We care about our customers. We do our best to make it a pleasant environment. Yes, Your Honor, I feel for this little girl. I would yes, want nothing like to happen to anybody's children, my children, anybody. Do you hear that, Miss Roberts? I hear it, but I don't believe it because you never came out when that happened. I did come when out. She's, a, she's a grandmother. Out. Out. That's why I came out. Ladies, scream. we're going to have order in this court. Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Roberts, I want to understand Gina's injuries from a medical perspective. I've consulted Dr. Eddie Richardson. So, Sheriff Matt, will you go get Dr. Richardson? Hello, doctor. Come on in, make yourself comfortable. Thank you, sir. Your Honor? 
Okay, Dr. Richardson, can you please explain Gina's injuries? Yes, this uh, uh, sustained injuries of multiple abrasions and bruises, as well as a fracture to the left forearm, a compound radial fracture that she sustained probably from the tumblets inside of the wash machine. For folks that are not doctors, what is a radial fracture? A radial fracture, you have two bones in your wrist and your arm, uh, the owner and the radius, and the radius is the one that comes down particularly closest to your thumb. As it was tumbling, there's a possibility that the arm was outstretched and it came back, because that's a very fragile bone in that arm. Did any of her wounds come from the glass breaking? From the jagged edge, those were probably from the glass. Now, the abrasions that she had suffered on her shoulder were more than likely from the inside of the wash machine. From getting tumbled around tumbled in around. there? Yes. What is it from an emotional perspective for a little kid like this? You bring up a very good point, Yana. That's probably one of the most substantial because she probably suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, a PTSD, you've heard. Um, For a three-year-old? Yes. And you can imagine being closed in a closed-in space, which is going to be manifested as claustrophobia and anxiety as she was closed in this space as well as the water coming in on her. Without counseling, she may suffer long-term anxieties yes, and phobias and separation. Uh, that would affect her mind because at three to five years old is when kids are developing their personalities and their coping mechanisms. It's so an important now, time. Exactly. So now you've interrupted that with a very traumatic experience. Thank you, doctor. We appreciate you. You are now released. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Roberts, you've heard the description from the doctor's perspective. What's it been like with Gina after this incident? I mean, it seems like an eternity because we used to do things together. I mean, she cannot play ball. She cannot play with her Barbie. You should have been watching it's... your kids, hon. Yeah, you were not there. And that, I was and the there. Washington I keep telling you, I was there. I was there. I was in the away. office. I came yeah, out. Yeah, you were not there, okay? I came out. And I was I folding clothes. But you want to come and fold so my clothes Clark, now? So, Ms. Clark, in light of... This little girl being injured. Yes, sir. You go right at it and say, well, you should have been watching your kids. Well, that's the whole thing, Your Honor. But it I seems mean, like you're not thinking about Gina, though. No, I, I am thinking about Gina. I'm not trying to be insensitive. I am sensitive to her, to the child's But injury. I'm not but seeing Your from Honor, you sir. that you are showing some heart about this. A little girl was nearly killed in your laundromat. Yes, sir. But there's a moral kind of ethical I deal here. Your Honor, I mean, y'all could have... I understand, have... Your Honor. I understand, yes, Your Honor. Yeah, you don't care. No, I do you care. You don't care. I so, Ms. Roberts, care. as a parent, as a daddy of three, my heart really goes out to you on this one. Thank as you. Does you, mine, Your Honor. you don't know what the future looks like. Ms. Clark, I'm glad you said that. Yes, it does, I am Your so Honor. glad you said that. I know that. you don't believe me, but I do feel for this child. You have a business, was, but you got a heart, too. I was almost crying with her while she was holding her child. I was the second one there, other than the guy with the fire thing. didn't care. Ladies? Yes, sir. I think yes, I've sir. heard enough. I'm yes, ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff, someone who is in your shoes, has to prove that there was an injury and that that injury was caused by the defendant's wrongdoing. That is, the wrong caused injury. Here, the wrong is shared. Clearly, there was harm. Clearly, the harm was caused by the wrong, but the wrong was shared. That is, you all should have secured this washing machine yeah. so the child or an adult could not get it open, especially if there was a risk of it turning on once you closed the door. You, on the other hand, you are a hardworking mom doing the most important job ever, but part of that job is to keep an eye on your children and to put them in the designated areas. So here I find that you are 60% responsible and you are 40% responsible for your daughter's injuries. In this case, you are seeking $8,000 for past medicals, $2,000 for future medicals, and $150,000 for the emotional distress that your daughter has gone through. In light of the fact that you are 40% responsible for your daughter's injuries, I hereby award you 60% of what you are seeking, which is $96,000. So I find in your favor and against Ms. Clark, that is my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Thank you, Honor. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Hoyt Tessner has to say. An injury to a child is not only heart-wrenching, the age of the child has legal implications. You cannot blame a five-year-old. The plaintiff won this case because the defendant knew the machine was defective and had an easy solution, unplug it. 
Investigation of the owner's knowledge is critical. The defendant knew the kids had climbed on and in machines before this accident. That's called an attractive nuisance.